guys, welcome to this brand new series on my channel about shopping vintage blazer. This first video is going to be a little bit more informative. It's going to be about the different categories of vintage blazers that I own and some tips on how to shop vintage blazer, how I shop vintage blazers, and the different styles that you can purchase depending on what you prefer. So I made some little notes in here because I didn't want to forget anything. Um, and I'm gonna go through how I shop them. So what's my process when I shop them, what platform I use, if I shop in real life or online or whatever. And then I'm gonna discuss a little bit about materials and cuts and like what's best to shop in terms of quality and wool versus linen or anything like that. And then I'm gonna end up with the different styles that you can get. So uh, round neck, shorter, more fitted, less fitted. I'm gonna try to cover most of what I know about vintage blazers and also what I've learned through my mini purchases. This is not a collection video, so you won't see all of my blazer collection but since there's going to be a lot of videos about blazer in this little series i'm going to cover it all in the end so without further ado let's get started so first of all i thought it would be interesting to start with how i shop for my vintage blazers because i know it can be a little bit confusing when you have not necessarily ever bought a vintage blazer before so i just wanted to start with the beginning so I shop most of my blazers on Etsy. I like Etsy because there's a lot, a lot, lot, lot of items. You get the most variety and it's just easy because they're all in one place. As opposed to if you were to shop in the stores, it's just a hit or miss. Like you'll go to a store and you won't necessarily find what you have and you'll end up buying something that you don't necessarily like because that's only what they have. And it happened to me before. I was on a hunt for a vintage blazer and I did a bunch of vintage stores and I was just like, well, I'm not gonna find anything so might as well take the one that I prefer. But it wasn't really something that I really wanted. As opposed to on Etsy, I find it's easier to just favor some items and then you can go through your list and really pick the one that you prefer. So what I do on Etsy, I just use the search bar tool and I will search for vintage blazer, nothing else. The only thing that I will add is the color if really I'm in the hunt for like a beige blazer or a plaid blazer or a black blazer, like I'll do vintage black blazer or vintage plaid blazer and then my preferences is to shop local because it just narrows down the number of items and it's just a little bit easier for me so i'll click on canada and sometimes if i know i don't want to go over a certain price limit i'll just put a price limit on the side and that will just filter through all of the items that there is available and it's just a little bit uh, less overwhelming to shop because there can be a lot of items listed so what I do is I just go through as many pages as there are, sometimes it's like 40 pages, sometimes it's just 10, it just depends what you're looking for particularly. And then I just favor whenever I see one that I like, and then that's it for the first step. <laughs> And then I go in my favorite page and then I'll go and open each of the ones that I favor and I'll go through the details. So the details, I look for mint condition, so good is new. And then I look for the size, it has to be the right size for me. And then I look for the material, I prefer wool blazers just because they just keep me warmer and they're usually better quality. Even in the summer I'll wear like very thin wool but I think it's just it just sits better when it's a wool blazer. I've had linen before and I don't wear them as much because they crease a lot more and it just looks a bit cheaper. Even though linen can be really, really high quality, I just prefer wool. And then that's about it. I just look at the description and I just make sure that it checks all of my criteria and yeah, that's it. Next up for the size. So I prefer oversize when I buy vintage blazers. So I'll always look for something that is a little bit bigger than what I would normally go for. So I'm usually a size zero or double zero. I'm quite small, but I like quite big clothes. But I would say to always go for 
three or four sizes above your usual size so in blazers i usually shop for a six or eight if it's in us and sometimes because it's vintage they don't really necessarily know the size because the tag is gone or whatever so the seller will just write the shoulder width and that i would say is the best thing that you can look for in the description because it, it will really tell the how wide the blazer is going to be so my shoulders are about 15 and a half inches across from here to here so what i'm comfortable with wearing are blazers that are around 19 inches so about that wide about an inch and a half offset on each side this is the range that i'm more comfortable with wearing I can go smaller but it won't have as much as an impact as I like to have and if I go bigger then usually I just feel a little bit self-conscious because it's like really really big but I do have some big ones anyways so that's it about like characteristic that I follow and I'll look for when I shop I also happen to find sometimes vintage blazers in shops and actual physical st stores but usually I find that they're a little bit more overpriced um, of course i'm not talking about thrift store thrift stores blazers are great if you can find them but they're a little bit more rare i have a few in my um, collection but not much so i would say etsy is my go-to and the prices that i pay usually for my blazers are between 45 dollars to i think my most expensive was 90 dollars but it was a designer one so i would say you don't have to spend a crazy amount of money to get a really really good blazers uh, usually vintage blazers are really good quality anyways just because they were made a little bit sturdier and like just more refined in their cuts and everything so yeah don't splurge too much of course if you want something like a Giorgio Armani blazer or a Chanel blazer you'll have to spend way more but if you want something that's good and you could get labels like Donna Care in New York, um, Jones New York, Escada even um, and yeah really good brands I, I've had also Jaeger blazer so yeah really decent brands for not that much so Etsy is a good way to go so I store all my blazers in garment bags because I find that it's just like prevent them from aging or like any damage that they can have through storage i just like to keep them each in like semi sheer garment bags i got these ones on amazon but you can find them pretty much everywhere and um i much prefer the clear vinyl one but they tend to be really expensive and since i have a huge collection of blazer i just went for these uh they just unzip like this and i just store them on like different hangers that i have they're not all the same since my closet is not a walk-in closet i don't really care so yeah i recommend to store your blazers in just little sleeves like this because it's just if you care about them really much it's not a big investment to buy these and it'll just prevent them from like getting any type of damage through storage so now let's talk about styles so the first ever vintage blazer that i bought was a double-breasted blazer so a couple years ago the trend of oversized blazer kind of started in fashion and the blazers that were seen the most were double-breasted like plaid blazer and i really had my eye on something like that i really wanted something um like that in, to add in my wardrobe so i went on etsy and i bought my first ever one which is this one i would say if you're in the hunt to like start your collection of vintage blazer a plaid double-breasted very traditional blazer is a good way to start because this type of blazer is really easy to style i just wear it with, with jeans dresses like t-shirts under turtlenecks it just goes with everything and this one is of course double breasted but there's six buttons in the front but you can get also some with just the four buttons but i find that the double breasted one are really easy to start with because they're just more traditional like masculine blazer and that's the style that i prefer to start with and i found it really really easy to get into that trend with a blazer like that so this one is 19 inches across it was the first one that i ever bought and i didn't even know about that so i just got lucky and i kind of based all my purchases 
around this one after I bought it so yeah, this one is 100% wool and it's from Lord & Taylor. This one is in a size 12 petite. So as you can see, it's a lot bigger than what I would usually wear, but I absolutely like this one. So double-breasted is a good style if you're starting. Next up, there is the single-breasted with two buttons. So after I got quite comfortable with buying vintage blazer, I kind of wider my horizon and I look for single breasted. Um, these ones are great if you like to wear your blazer open because they won't cross over as much as the double breasted and they're just a little bit more flowy in their structure. This one is a Pierre Cardin. I think that this one is a men's blazer. Um, the other one is a woman and I have a mix of men and women. I just make sure that the shoulder width is the one that I want and really men or women it doesn't matter. I tend to prefer men uh, usually just because in the back the lines are more straight. I don't like when they cinch too much unless it's like a really specific style like Chanel or any other blazer. Uh, I prefer the boxier cut. So I really, really like the double button in the front and I tend to just wear it open like that. And this one is also 100% wool and it's got really nice details. Next up, also in the single breasted, there's the one button option. So this one is from Donna Karen, New York and it's just really simple. It's got one button at the front and it's got no lapel. So it's just like very breezy, even more flowy than the other one, and I tend to wear this one open as well. It's a little bit more long line, but it's a nice, like, very simple addition to any wardrobe. It's just like very breezy and very easy to style. So double button or single button are like a great addition also. Next up also in the single breasted one are the one with three buttons. Uh, I recently purchased this one in a thrift store. It was about $20 and it's 100% wool as well. The three buttons are really great if you're looking to wear your blazer as a dress or with nothing under, just because they come up higher um, on your chest and you won't show as much cleavage as like a single button or a two button single breasted blazer, which can go really low and it's quite impossible unless you want to wear it with like tape but I don't really like that it quite I find it quite annoying so if you want to wear a blazer as a dress I would say go for like the classic 80s three button style just because it's easier to keep clothes and um, you'll feel a little more secure I find that the three buttons is also very masculine in its style so I like to have a version that's like that a little bit more boxy and like just traditional when you close it up to here I just like this option in my wardrobe so three buttons single breasted so the final style that i'm going to talk about today is round neck so i've talked about double breasted single breasted but they were all like v-shape at the front and usually that's the kind of blazer i prefer just because they're a little bit more easy to wear because you can see what you're wearing under and it's just a little bit easier to style but i also have a couple in a round neck so i'm sorry that all the blazers that i'm showing today are black and it's just a little bit harder to see but this one is not a vintage blazer but i just wanted to show it to you because it has this particular color um, and the next one that i'm going to show you is vintage but it just fits into another category so the round neck blazer are just a little bit more dressy i would say that this one is like more of an evening blazer or a very dressy like can be worn as a coat like a very smart coat just because it looks a little bit more preppy when it's closed all the way and it's round but i really 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 like this one anyways and you can also wear it open and it, the little flaps here kind of um open like that when you wear it not button at the front but yeah, round necks are also really nice. I wouldn't recommend going for a round neck right off the bat. If you're starting your collection, I would much more recommend to go for the classic v-neck just because it's nice to start with something that's very classic and timeless. If you already have a lot of vintage blazer or blazers in general and you want to like add something new to the collection, I would say round neck is like a nice elevated look to a blazer. And you can also wear it with like a pearl necklace and make it super dressy. 
So the final style that I'm going to talk about are novelty blazers. So when you're comfortable in your collection and you have a good range of like neutral colors and different styles of blazer that you know that you can wear with pretty much anything, um, you can start to look for pops of colors and what I call novelty blazers. So the blazers that you're gonna wear when you want to look a little bit more extra and you really want to make a statement with the blazer that you're wearing. I only started to shop for novelty blazers when I had about 10 blazers in my collection. Now I'm not saying that you need to get that much, but I'm really passionate about this item of clothing so I like my collection to grow. Um, and I would say that it's good for this type of blazer to shop in store first. So just go in store and try like a red tweed blazer or try different colors and see what you prefer. Also materials or finishes and like buttons and details. Just go try multiple ones and then go back on Etsy and then shop there. I got my first one when I was shopping in Paris actually, the one that I'm about to show you. But I also got one on Etsy from Kenzo, which is like a red blazer and it's very extra, but it's also super, super nice. So the one that I'm going to talk about today is this one that I got from a shop called Episode Vintage. So this one is also no lapels, so it's quite particular. It's not classic by no means. I mean, it is still classic. It's got that like Chanel uh, traditional style with the pockets, the gold buttons and like all this but it's not something that I wear every day um, not at all but it's something that I really like to have for like a nice change in my collection and when I'm in a mood to wear something that's a little bit more out there I would say that having one blazer that's like very colorful or that has like great details on it is like a nice addition you can also really play with accessories with this and also lipstick so if you wear like big gold um, earrings and like a red lip this look can be truly amazing i really really like this one it's like a nice option to have i think so that is it for the first video of this series. I hope that you like the way that I filmed it. Of course, there's going to be a lot more information coming up, but I just wanted to give you an overview on like the different types of blazer that you can get. And um, I do own a couple of units in each style. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for my full collection, which is going to be called Blazer Diary where I'm gonna show you how I style each of them individually in sort of like more vlog type of video. And maybe I'm gonna do a lookbook as well, but we'll see. We'll see how you guys respond to this video and how you liked it. And leave me your comments and your thoughts below on this first video and suggestions if you have any. And I will see you very soon, bye.